The following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. Well, 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 it's good to be back. My name is Ron Juckett. Welcome to the program for this 10th day of May, 20 to the 22th, and we're going to give this one a go. It's been a couple of weeks since we've actually done a live stream. Uh, thanks to COVID and all that, and so everything was put on hold. So today, we go back to July 13th, 1985, for the Los Angeles Dodgers and Chicago Cubs. The Dodgers in first place in the National League West at 52 and 31. The Cubs have fallen off the wagon. They are 39 and 45. Now, the Cubs were supposed to use Larry Gura in this game. That's their real life starter. But the computer. Couldn't quite figure out not to use tomorrow's starter in relief of a game from the day before. So Dennis Eckersley gets a start. It works out well. He would not have started the Sunday game. He will start for his next schedule. Start would have been after the All-Star break. He's on full rest, and so he gets the call today for Chicago. Fernando Valenzuela gets the call for the Dodgers. It's the Dodgers and the Cubs as we come back to baseball right here. On Retro Sports Network. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to. Hey, can I get the trouble? Forgot to actually set it up. Hold on. Boy, they. I knew there was a step I was forgetting. Retro Sports Network presents. Major League Replay 19. Oh, dear Lord. It's been that long. Oh, good. Uh, all right, hold on. Hold on. Nine factor authorization for this thing. Goodness. This is not the Guy Lafleur tribute game. Ah. And they changed my color for this, too. I don't like it. It's all dark and stuff. All right, as Retro Sports Network finally presents... Major League Replay 1985. Today, from Gregley Field in Chicago, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs. And today's game is brought to you by DigitalAdvice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. All righty, so... Let's see if we get that back up. I don't like the fact that's a dark screen now. Anyway, so it'll be Dennis Eckersley against the Dodgers, and Los Angeles will counter with Fernando Valenzuela. Eck has had himself a magnificent replay so far. He has a one-hitter to his credit. He is making his 17th start. He will actually make 26 because this is a bonus start for him. Six and four. With a 199 ERA. Eckersley, 31 years old, a fastball pitcher, 85, and a fly ball pitcher. Hasn't pitched in 10 days, so he has plenty of rest. A no decision against the Phillies. In a 6 5 loss, he went eight innings, 
seven hits, two runs, both earned, two solo homers, and struck out eight. So overall, 131 in the third innings, 100 hits, 37 runs, 29 earned, 11 homers. He walked 10 and struck out 98. And has an ERA of 199 and a record of 6-4. and four. That one hitter, by the way, came against Montreal on April 12th. His first start of the year. Dave Anderson will lead off for the Dodgers at short. Bob Baylor at third will bat second. Bill Russell and left will hit third. Enos Cabell cleans up and right. He's new to the ball club. Greg Brock at first will bat fifth. Candy Maldonado in the center will bat sixth. Mike Sosha behind the plate bat seventh. Steve Sachs at second bats eighth. And Fernando Valenzuela on the mound should throw about 135 pitches. For the Cubs defensively, Davey Lopes, a two and a two and left. Old friend for the Dodgers for sure. Mickey, yeah, Mickey Hatcher is a three and a four in center. Keith Moreland is a two and an eight in right. That could be Billy Hatcher, too. It's a Hatcher of some sort. Chris Spire, a five at third, no Ron Say. Larry Boa, a five at short. Ryan Sandberg, a five at second. Leon Durham, a six at first. Jody Davis behind the plate is a six and a seven. And Eckersley, a seven on the mound with a 9.23 fielding percentage. So with all that out of the way and having to get all the streams right and blah, 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 let's get to it. We'll have one more game for you this week. Welcome back. Thank you, my friend. Go Dodgers. We'll see how I feel tomorrow if I'll do a football game. But we'll do the Blue Jays and the Angels on Thursday at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. And then tell you the starters for the All-Star game after. How about that? Which will be next week. Anderson at 192, a homer and 14 RBI. Eck finally winds and deals. It's a bunt is down. Davis picks it up, throws to Sandberg, one out. So after two weeks away, it wasn't the players on strike. I had a visit from my dear friend COVID. Bob Baylor at 246, no homers and seven RBI. Eckersley, an emergency starter for the Cubs, hasn't thrown in 10 days. Funny, I really haven't streamed in 10 days. Pitch to Baylor. There's a line drive to right. Moreland is there, and Keith will make the catch. Two out. Brings up Bill Russell at 234. No homers. A triple, two doubles, and eight RBI. Hopefully, people like RJL have kept you occupied with some good baseball stuff, baseball demos. Pitch to Russell. There's a fly ball on the left. Lopes coming in, and he will make the catch to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the first here at Wrigley. No score. So as Fernando takes his warm-up pitches, it is a gorgeous day here in Chicago. 79 degrees. Winds blowing out to left at 9. Fernando... 25 years old, screwball pitcher and a ground ball pitcher. When he throws the fastball, it's at 90. He did not get a decision in his last start five days ago against the Pirates, a 2-1 loss. Seven innings, 98 pitches. That's a season low for Fernando. Allowed three hits, a run it was earned, and he struck out 11. Against the Cubs on May 14th, he struck out a season-high 15 in a complete game win. Overall, Fernando in 140 and two-thirds innings, 99 hits, 44 runs, 33 earned. He's just given up three home runs. He has walked 60 while striking out 127 at 10-7 and seven with an ERA of 211. You would think that he will be in Minneapolis next week for the All-Star game. It's Billy Hatcher, not Mickey. Anyway, here is the lineup that Fernando will face. It's Billy Hatcher in center. He'll lead off. Ryan Sandberg at second will bat second. 
Davy Lopes and left will hit third. Keith and left. Keith Moreland cleans up and right. Jody Davis behind the plate bats fifth. Leon Durham at first will go sixth. Chris Beyer in for Ron Say at third. He'll bat seventh. Larry Boa at short will bat eighth. And Eckersley, who threw six pitches in his half of the first, will bat ninth. Defensively for the Dodgers, Bill Russell a 6-0-1 and in left. Candy Maldonado a 3-4 and in center. Enos Cabela 3-0-1 and in right. Bob Baylor is a good defensive third baseman. He's a 7. Dave Anderson a 6. Steve Sachs a 5 at second. Greg Brock a 6 at first. Sosha a 7 and a 6 behind the plate. And Fernando is a 7 on the mound with a 1,000 fielding percentage. Billy Hatcher steps in at 267, a home run and 6 RBI. And Fernando's delivery is a ground ball to third. Baylor a long throw across the way. And, brought, and Hatcher is retired. D. Scott Howard's had to entertain himself. He's been forced to play your own games. Goodness. Don't do that. A 62 Dodgers replay with OOTP 23. How's that going for you? Here's Sandberg. Rhino at 294. Seven homers and 42 RBI. Fernando deals. And Sandberg sends this one into right. Back goes Cabell. Enos will make the catch in the corner. Two out. And that brings up Davey Lopes. Davey at 208. Two homers and 16 RBI. Fernando's pitch. There's a line drive to right. Cabell will make the catch, and that will retire the side. Dodgers go, or the Cubs rather, go in orders. No run, no hits, and no errors. We go to the second, no score. So Cabell over from Houston. Rock and Maldonado. I wonder who they got traded for to get Enos. Al Oliver, of course, is now in Toronto. So the Dodgers reloading here with about two weeks to go before the All-Star break. How you doing, midlife crisis? One game off the pace. Wills is running wild on the bases. I feel better. Still tired, but feel better. How many games, Mr. Howard, have you played? Enos is 6 for 9 since coming over from Houston with 5 RBI. Eckersley starts the second with a fly ball shallow right. Moreland coming in. One out. Brings up Greg Brock. 274. 13 homers and 39 RBI. Eck winds and deals, and there's a high fly ball to right that Moreland will turn and watch it go. So Brock hits the fourth home run of the year off of Eckersley, and the Dodgers jump out one nothing, or 12th homer of the year, rather. Just a laser shot in the bleachers in right center, and the Wrigley faithful have thrown that back on the field, of course. That would be where the, there were stands there in that corner. As you can see from left field. John's on a staycation. Good week for that. Was hoping we'd be back. Yep. Baseball today and Thursday. And we'll see how I feel tomorrow. Here's Candy Maldonado. 192, four homers and 10 RBI. If I'm feeling up to it tomorrow, We'll show off some of the new action PC football game. Eck. What? No. Maldonado strikes out on a 2 2. They were going to pinch hit for him in the first inning? I don't think so. Here's Sosha. Remember, it was supposed to be Dennis Lamp going for the Cubs, but Lamp pitched Friday. And so he was on short rest. So Eckersley, who has not pitched in 10 days, gets the call. Sosha 279, no homers and 24 RBI. 
Ground ball is short. Boa has it play him, and that's an error. And so Sosha will stay at first as Boa booted it. So two out for Sack. Steve at 249, a home run, and 12 RBI. Brock with a solo shot, the lone run of the game for anybody. Here in the second, Sacks ground ball past Sandberg. Moreland will pick it up, and Sosha will hold in second, so the Dodgers have two on and two out. For Fernando, who can hit, 385, no homers, and 6 RBI. Ah, you know, you can relax now that you're off from work. Mr. Howard, 62 Dodgers are 20 and 13 in OTP 25, or 23 rather. Colfax and Drysdale with six wins each. Well, I'm glad I helped you make your work day go faster. First and second, two out. Pitch to Fernando. He swings a ground ball to Sandberg, flips it to Boa for the easy out, and that will retire the side. Dodgers get a run. On the solo homer from Brock, two hits and an error. It does not hurt. Bottom two, one nothing L.A. And so Moreland, Davis, and Durham to face Fernando. Keith at 312, four homers and 58 RBI. There's a line drive to short. Anderson has it, one out. Brings up Jody Davis. Jody at 251. 10 homers and 28 RBI. Pitch from Fernando. Another ground ball to short. Hernan or Anderson deep in the hole over to Brock. And there's two. So this will be the longest I've actually talked at one time. We'll see how that goes. Here's Durham. Lone lefty in the lineup for the Cubs. 279, 7 homers, and 40 RBI. Fernando's pitch, and Durham hits that one in the left center for a single. Maldonado cut it off, and that's the first Cub hit. Buckshot Kid, how are you? So here's Chris Spire. You get extra points if you remember Chris with the Cubs. 223 for Spire, 4 homers. And 20 RBI. Mr. Howard is starting a 20-day dog sitting assignment in West Seattle. And if you didn't know, Mr. Howard was part of the 68,000 strong for the Seattle Sounders winning the CONCAF Champions League. The largest crowd ever. And that, that can't be for MLS history but maybe the biggest crowd in the Seattle soccer history. Buckshot Kid, I'm doing better, thanks. Been a rough couple of weeks. Pitch to Spire. Chris hits a ground ball to second. Sacks digs for it. Throws to Brock, and that will retire the side. Cubbies get no runs, a hit, and nobody, uh, no errors. They leave a runner on. We go to the third. one nothing L.A. So top of the lineup for the Cubs... Anderson is 0 for 1. Eckersley is opening 9 on 34 pitches. Two innings, two hits, the solo shot to Brock, and a strikeout. He starts the third with a ground ball right back up the box. Eckersley strolls off the mound, throws to first, one out. For Bob Baylor. It, it's been so long since I've done anything on Twitch. I had to sign back in, and they gave me my code, and the screen color went from white to dark, and I don't like that as much. Bob Baylor is 0 for 1, but I forgot I had to do that so I could talk to you guys. The last stream I did was the Guy Lafleur live stream, as my wife was coming down with COVID. Fun, fun, fun. Pitch to Baylor. There's a ground ball to first. Durham comes in on the grass. Trots it over to the bag for the out. And there's two away for Bill Russell, who's 0 for 1. So next week we'll do the All-Star game. And we'll do some golf. So we'll pick up a bonus baseball game for you on Thursday. Toronto and California. 
and tell you the starters for the All-Star game. Pitch to Russell. Slow chopper over the mound. Boa has to come in on the grass. Throws to Durham, and Russell's retired. So, no runs, no hits, no errors. After two and a half, it's the Dodgers. One, Chicago, nothing. So, Boa, Eckersley, and Hatcher to face Valenzuela here in the bottom of the third. Just remember, Mr. Howard, your name is not Robert Culp. You are not allowed to eat the milk bones with the dogs. Larry at 223, three doubles and 13 RBI. Pitch from Fernando. There's a ground ball base hit left side. Russell will throw it back in the infield. And now bring up Eckersley with nobody out. Beeler and Brock playing for the bunt. Eckersley is going to bunt. 111, no homers, and one RBI. He did have a homer in real life. He squares. Bunt rolls foul first base side, and the count goes to 0-2. We'll leave the bunt in play. And this one will is a dead bunt. Baylor goes to second for Anderson, and Boa is retired. So the sacrifice does not work. So it goes... On the fielder's choice, 5-6. So one out for Hatcher. Billy is 0 for 1. Fernando, his opening 9 on 27 pitches. Two and a third innings, two hits. 17 and 10 on the real year. And 10 and 7 on the replay. Pitch to Hatcher. In the left field, Russell crowd likes it, but that will stay in the yard despite the wind blowing out in that direction. Eckersley retreats back to first. No, Eckersley's going to go for it. So Eckersley's going to try for second to throw to Sachs, and Eckersley is. Well, Sachs dropped it. So that's an error. It's over the head of Steve Sachs. So Russell on courts one. And Eckersley moves on to third. He's a tying run. Russell has a ramen noodle for an arm. And Sex is not Wilt Chamberlain. He doesn't have that kind of leaping ability. Well, John, thanks for being back. We are doing better. And now we can have virtual lunch together. For sure. Here's Sandberg. Rhinos 0 for 1. Tying run on third. Two out bottom of the third. Pitch to Sandberg. Ryan swings and here's a fly ball to left. Russell will retreat and make the catch. And Eckersley will be stranded at third. No runs. One hit in the air. Does not hurt. After three, it's the Dodgers 1. The Cubs nothing. So Cabell, Brock, and Maldonado to face Eckersley here in the top of the fourth. Enos is 0 for 1. Surprise, Sachs didn't throw on to Waveland Avenue. Well, no, it was actually, it was Russell who overthrew Sachs. Todd B., how are you? Cabell 0 for 1. Now he's not. That's in the left field. A base hit. Lopes will throw it back in. Cabell's digging for 2. And Enos has his first double with the Dodgers. And that'll bring up Greg, uh, Greg Brock, who homered in the second, the lone run of the ball game. Yeah, Sachs had that same kind of double clutch throw. Thanks, Todd. Chuck Knobloch just kept hitting Keith Olbermann's mom. Of course, John Lester had that too. You know, he was a pitcher, but he just got the willies when he had to throw to first. <laughs> Brock in his 14th the last time up. Runner on second. Line drive to short. Boa has it for the out. So one out for Candy. I guess he can't hit righties very well. He struck out his first time up. 
I'm not going to pinch it for him now. Largest in CONCAF Champions League history. Okay, Sounders record is 69,274 for the 2019 MLS Cup Final. It's also the Lumen Field record, much to the chagrin of the Seahawks. Wow. I'm surprised they seat more for soccer than they do for football. No, he's not going to pinch it. Runner on second. There's a base hit in the left field. Cabell should round third and score. Lopes picks it up. Enos will try and score. Lopes' throw home is close, but no cigar. So the game is tied, and Maldonado moves to second on the throw. So with one out here in the top of the fourth, it's 2-0 L.A. Baseball is back. Mike Sosha is 0 for 1. Next baseball stream will be Thursday. We'll see how I feel tomorrow if I'm going to do a football game. Show off some of the extra PC football. But Thursday will be with you at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, for the Blue Jays and the Angels. Heck, wines and deals. Ground ball to third. Spire over to Durham for the out. You do love your football in the Pacific Northwest. Two out for sack. Steve is a single. Cal Britt Brown is our latest follower on Steam. We now have 225. He followed just as I was getting sick. And it always away. So he follows the channel, and then we do nothing with it for 14 days. <laughs> Sacks with a single is first time up. Maldonado on second, two out. Eckersley deals, and there's a ground ball left side, base hit. Maldonado will round third. Lopes will throw it in the infield, and it's 3 nothing Chicago, uh, Los Angeles. Really, I'm all right. So Sachs with an RBI single. And now I'll bring up Fernando, who's 0 for 1. And of course, Valenzuela's going to swing. Sachs stays at first. Fernando pops it up right side. Hatcher moves over to right center, and that will retire the side. Dodgers, however, get two runs on three hits and no errors. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 3 0 LA. You can say that. I just can't say it as a stream title. NFL could have the record if they would give us a Super Bowl. What are the chances of that? Well, it's been forever since we've looked at this. So here's a look at the standings. And again, we have one more day before the All-Star break. The Dodgers sitting pretty at 52 and 31. Five and a half over Houston. Then Cincinnati, who's played better as of late. San Francisco, San Diego, and Atlanta. In the East, the Cardinals are still printing off playoff tickets. They've won three straight, seven to ten, and are 58 and 25. It's a winning percentage of 699. Montreal is 12 and a half back. The Mets have played better as of late, but they've lost their last two and are two games under 500. In the American League, Kansas City three and a half over California. You'll see the Angels on Thursday. Then Oakland, Chicago, Texas, Seattle, and Minnesota. Minnesota in dead last. Hosting the All-Star game. In the American League East, the Blue Jays have won four straight. They lead the Red Sox by two and a half. The Yankees, Orioles, and Tigers are all five and a half back. And so that gets you up to date of where we were before the replay stopped. Davey Lopes is 0 for 1. John says, I think the NFL is going to a rota of five places and may mix in new stadiums. You can't bid, it, bid anymore. They get assigned. You know, L.A., Miami, uh, Phoenix. 
Atlanta, and Tampa, I think would be the five of them. If I'm, am I right? Pitch to Lopes. There's a ground ball, third base side. Baylor has it, straddles the bag, throws to first, and Lopes, those old legs aren't fast enough anymore, and he's out on a bang banger. So one out for Moreland. Keith is 0 for 1. Fernando winds and deals. That's in the shallow right. Cabell coming in and will make the catch. How could I have I forgotten about New Orleans? Two out. So certainly L.A. And Calif for California, Phoenix, Miami, New Orleans. I don't know. Do you think they mix Vegas into the rotation? They're getting one soon anyway. Here's Jody Davis. Jody's 0 for 1. Got him. So the first strikeout from Fernando retires a side. Pitch is swung on and missed, and that's the inning. We go to the fifth, three nothing, L.A. So top of the lineup for Eckersley, first eighteen on sixty nine pitches, four hit, four innings, five hits, the home run to Brock, and the strikeout. All three runs are earned. Anderson is zero for two. Todd B with the first pun. Since we've come back, he wouldn't bet on it. Ba doom boom. I would agree. Anderson hits a chopper over the mound. Boa over to first. One out. Go back to sleep. Here's Bob Baylor. He is 0 for 2. Eck winds and deals. Here's a liner to right center. Hatcher moving over. Makes the catch two out. Brings up Russell. Bill is 0 for 2. Three runs, five hits, an error for the Dodgers. They've left on three. Cubs no run, two hits, and an error, and they've left on two. Pitch from Dennis. There's a ground ball to short. Boa flags it down over to first. And that will retire the side. Halfway home on a Tuesday afternoon. How about that? Dodgers three, Cubs nothing. Can't find my mouse. Oh, there we go. Oh, and now we're down to... We'll be back in one minute. A $2,700 stake? Wow. Anyway, join the slate. Here's how we got here. Greg Brock, a solo shot in the second to make a 1 0 Dodgers. In the fourth, attack on two more. Candy Maldonado with an RBI single, scoring Enos Cabell. And then Steve Sachs with a single to make a 3 0. So Fernando, a two hitter through four with one strikeout. 
and Eckersley a five hitter through five with one strikeout. So a friend of John Goodell's was in Vegas for the draft and the stake his friend got was $2,700. I paid $63 once for a BLT written apparently in the First National Bank of Rubber. Here's Leon Durham. He singled his first time up as we start the bottom of the fifth. And there's a base hit past Brock. Cabell throws it back in, and that's the third hit for the Cubs. Here's Spire. He's 0 for 1. $2,700 worth of beef? Yeah. That would last a long time. Even the good stuff. Pitch to Spire. And there's a line drive to third. Baylor is there. Makes the catch. One out. Brings up Larry Boa. Larry has singled. He's one for one. Durham does not have good speed on first. Pitch from Fernando. Struck him out. That's two. A 2-2 two -two fastball on the outside corner. And there's two out for Eckersley. Who's 0 for 1? Don't know how many of you caught the first Peacock streaming game on Sunday, which was also simulcast on NBC. The first regular season game on NBC since 19, September 30th, 1989. And I bring that up because I'm told I do a Vin Scully impression or three. And if you caught the opening of the game, it was narrated by Vin Scully, which I thought was tremendous. And no, I did not cry. Pitch to Eckersley. Dennis swings a ground ball up the middle. Anderson takes it to the bag himself to retire the side. Chicago gets a hit, no runs, and no errors. They leave a runner around. We go to the sixth. Three, nothing, L.A. So it'll be Cabell, Brock, and Maldonado to face Eckersley here in the sixth. Enos has one of the three L.A. runs. He got that in the fourth. He doubled and scored. And as D. Scott Howard says, this dream needs more Cabell. Well, by God, we aim to please. Cabell swings a ground ball to second. Sandberg throws it to first. One out. No, it's an error. Sandberg uncorked one into the dugout. And Cabell trots to second. So Rhino with a rare error. And so the Dodgers have Cabell on second. Nobody out for Brock, who homered in the second. Yeah, Saturday afternoon baseball was never the same after left NBC. I agree with that. Spent a lot of Saturday afternoons watching that. It was nice that the Red Sox were actually on the main network this weekend. I think Fox does a good job of baseball, but it's not the same. It really isn't the same. Pitch to Brock. There's a chopper up the box. Eckersley off the mound. Throws to first for the out, and Cabell stays put. One away for Candy, who was one for two. He has singled, struck out, and scored, and driven in his 11th of the year. We're still not pinch hitting. Candy swings a chopper over the mound. Boa and has to hurry, throws to first, and Candy is retired. Cabell moves to third, two out. So he moves the runner over for Sosha, who's 0 for 2. Joe and Tony, yep. Vin and Joe. Costas when he liked baseball. Pitch to Sosha. There's a base hit left field. Cabell will score. So the air stings. It's now 4 nothing L.A. As Boa couldn't get there. So two out. Eckersley not covering himself in clover, although that run is going to be unearned. Here's Sack. Steve is 2 for 2. He is single twice and driven in a run. Pitch to Steve. There's a base hit left side through the hole. And Sosha will hold. Oh, he's going to try for it. 
Again, Lopes doesn't have a good arm anymore. The throw to Spire is in time. They got him. So the inning's over. The Dodgers put another run on the board, however. We go to the bottom of the sixth here at Wrigley. Four nothing Dodgers. So 83 degrees now at Wrigley. Harry's in center field with his shirt off. Wind blowing out to left center now at nine. You had a couple of beers with Kurt Gowdy one night in Seattle. Yeah, I've heard nothing but great things about Gowdy. The Cowboy, of course, being from Wyoming, made a name for himself in Boston. Owned a rock radio station in Boston forever, WCGY. Billy Hatcher, by the way, is 0 for 2. Fernando is opening 18 on 57 pitches. Five innings, three hits, and just two strikeouts. Yeah, feeling all right, Dave. Glad to be back on. Let's see. Midlife crisis says, from about 10 years old to about 14, it was a tradition after sleeping until 11, someone was too cool for school to watch cartoons, to make two PBJs and watch Game of the Week while eating lunch. Yep. Didn't spend the rest of the time playing Strat in front of the TV. Ha, ha, ha. But it crushed me when the game was late. Was in heaven one day and would occasionally have a doubleheader. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. I'm not quite sure that Major League Baseball and in their infinite wisdom realized just how many kids became baseball fans because of Saturday afternoons. Yep, the Pickle Rick girl is over. Dave's back over here. Well, I'm sure if I was streaming 24-7, the Hot Tub Girl would get more attention. Hatcher's 0 for 2. There's a little looper that's going to get down in front of Cabell, and the Cubs have a leadoff single. Yep, the doubleheaders this week in baseball and the baseball bunch. Anyway, it was my first time I really had a chance to see Jason Benetti. Jason has cerebral palsy, by the way, and he is a good announcer. Poor Kevin Euclid. Peacock NBC is going to go with two local color guys, so it was Steve Stone for the White Sox and Kevin Euclid for the Red Sox. And of course, Stone is Benetti's regular partner, and they get along great, and Euclid is there just kind of chiming in. Padres and Braves, I believe, are the, is the game on Sunday. Ryan knows 0 for 2. Hatcher on first, throw to first, and Billy's back. So it came out today, by the way, that when Tom Brady hangs them up, that he will be the lead analyst on Fox's football package. So I don't know if he would do that when... Tampa season is over or what? But oh, she hasn't. Maybe she's been sick. Maybe she caught a cold from all those heavy duty clothes that she has on. Pitch to Rhino. There's a base hit left field. Russell will pick it up. Hatcher will hold it second. I would think. No, he's going to go for. Th no, I'm going to hold him. Poor thing in her wading pool in that ba in that tight little bathing suit. Good way to get sick. So here's Davy Lopes. Nobody out. Davy is 0 for 2. Runners on first and second. Lopes swings. Hard bounder to Baylor. Might be 2. Sacks for 1. He pivots and will not throw to first. So they get the 4s. 5-4. So Hatcher on f third. Lopes on first, one out. When John, uh, yeah, thanks, Big Dave. John says, when I listen to your podcast on playing games while sick, it reminded me of when I broke my ankle in junior high. Ouch. My mom didn't want me to go to school while my cast dried, so since I was not sick, she'd let me play strapped a whole week. Oh, boy. Yeah, that would be the best week ever. That's awesome. Lopes is going to try it. Sosha throws down 
to Sachs, and Davey is safe. That's number 26 for Lopes. And a one strike count. So first, or second and third, rather. One out for Moreland, who's 0 for 2. Mr. Howard says, my Saturday baseball started with Diz and his partner, Pee Wee Reese, sitting by your grandfather's side. There's a half inning or so of a... Uh, of a Dizzy Dean Pee Wee Reese game from 1962. It's hard to watch. And Todd B says, I never knew you could tie soap on a rope in so many places after watching her. Well, you know, we tried, those of us who do Twitch do try to be educational. So second and third and a one strike count to Moreland. There's a base hit right field. Cabell will pick it up. Hatcher will score. Lopes will round third. And score without a throw, and it's four to two now. The Cubs are on the board. Brings up Jody Davis. Jody is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Jody pops it up. All right side. The bell goes back, makes the catch. Cubs come back and win this game now that we're talking about. Oh! And Cabell doesn't have a great arm. Moreland's digging for second base. The throw to Anderson is not in time. So Moreland, in a sense, steals second base. Two out, runner in scoring possession for Leon Durham, who has singled twice. Cubs come back to win this game now that we're talking about Picklebit Girl. They're going to make her a mascot. Pitch to Leon. Fly ball to right. Cabell coming in, and Enos will make the catch. However, the Cubs get two runs on three hits and no errors. We go to the seventh at Wrigley, 4-2, L.A. So Fernando, Anderson, and Baylor to face Eckersley here in the seventh. Fernando is 0 for 2. Eckersley's pitch. Ground ball. Eckersley couldn't play it. It plays him, and Fernando it reaches on the air. So that's the third error for the Cubs this afternoon. The 1899 Cleveland Spiders go, we can relate. It's okay. So Eckersley, his first 27 on 101 pitches, six plus innings, seven hits. The home run to Brock hasn't walked anybody and struck out one. Anderson is 0 for 3. Dave swings in the shallow right. Moreland comes in and makes the catch for the out. You are not going to run on Moreland. He's an 8 arm out there. One out for Baylor. Bob is 0 for 3. Yep. Midlife Crisis says Lasorda and the Dodgers infinite wisdom. Let's get Cabell a career first and third baseman. And put him in the outfield. R.J. Reynolds played a bunch the beginning part of the year here. Todd says, I would sit and sort baseball cards while watching the NBC Game of the Week. Lo looking for that elusive 75 Topps Aaron card. Yep. I like those 75s. Baylor is 0 for 3. In the left field, lopes over by the bullpens. And Davey makes the catch. Fernando goes back to first. He's going to try for a second. The throw to Sandberg is not in time. So the Dodgers take the chance to out. And Fernando is in scoring position for Russell, who's 0 for 3. As a teenager kid in the 80s, Jamie says, we did not have cable, so other than the occasional local game, the Saturday afternoon game was where I saw most other teams. Played a lot of sports games while listening to John Miller on the radio. Doing the Orioles. That's true. Ron was miss me was missing on Twitch for a full fortnight. And again, that is not something you'll ever hear on a fortnight stream. Russell's 0 for 3. Base hit left field. Balance a whale around third. Moreland in right center. Will he throw home? 
He will try it. Fernando is digging, and he will score with ease. As Russell goes to third, it is now 5 to L.A. And that brings up Cabell, who has a double. He won for three, and he has scored twice. So the Dodgers get an insurance run here in the seventh. And they'll pick up another one as Cabell punches that one into the ivy in left center field. Enos has his second double as a Dodger. It's 6-2 to two, L.A. Brings up Greg Brock. Greg is one for three. He got the first run of the ball game, a solo shot in the second. Six runs, nine hits, an error for L.A. They have left on four. Cubs, two runs, six hits, three errors, and they've left on four. Brock laces that one down the line and right. Cabell will round third. Brock will hold it first. The throw to the plate. Davis is hoping to make a tag. Cabell will slide past it, and it is seven to two, L.A. Oh, they got him. Stretch time. We'll talk about that in a moment. Well, we're going to show you this play again because Davis realized that Camel was going to score and he cut it off and threw it right to second base. I think you get to hear the seventh inning stretch again. So Brock with a single. Cabell was not going to get thrown out, although Moreland has a good arm. So Keith went home with it. Davis... Realized that the throw was up the line. This fires an absolute strike to Boa, and Brock is retired. So it goes 9 2 6. Used midlife crisis says used to live getting love getting cards at the beginning of the season because you could spend five dollars and get a large chunk of your collection started before all the dupes started flowing in. I can't fathom all the valuable cards I traded to my friends for their dupes. Yep, Mr. Howard has a DVD of John Miller calling the 1977 North American Soccer League playoff. I believe it was the San Jose Earthquakes because Miller is from Northern California. And John, at that point of his life, had a full head of hair. And he looked like, you know on The Simpsons, Chris Spire, by the way, is old for two. I don't know if they still had the junior anchor man position behind Kent Brockman, but he had the helmet hair. And you know what? John Miller had the helmet hair. And I hit the wrong button, so you can see the play again. Did you enjoy the gum, John? If you bought it early enough in the season, it wasn't quite stale. I have an uncle who loved the stale bubble gum. And so he'd buy me the cards and he'd eat the gum. Pitch to Spire, who's old for two. Chris hits a liner in the right field. Now drop for a hit. So that's the seventh hit for the Cubs. Here's Boa, Larry, one for two. He is single and struck out. 7-2, Dodgers, bottom of the seventh. Here's a fly ball to left. Russell coming in. Bill will make the catch. Inspire will retreat to first. In the two weeks that I was out sick and not doing anything on Twitch, they changed around the screen where I can see what I'm doing and punch up the ad. 
and and read your guys' chat. It's all new. And they took out the 32nd aid ads. Here's Eckersley. Dennis, we're going to pinch hit for Dennis. So sing it with me. Who can hit a lefty? Bob Dernier, who does not have a pinch hit this year. 261, no homers, and 13 RBI. That's true. Nice trade-off. Old gum is worth nothing. Well, every once in a while, you'll see some sort of video on YouTube of someone trying some of that Topps gum from 30, 35 years ago. And some old cards are worth a lot. But those 500 Cal Daniels you have that you were hoping to retire with, not so much. Pitch to Dernier. Bob swings. Popped up. Sosha takes off the mask. And that will be out of play. So 0-2 the count to Bob. One out, bottom of the seventh. 7-2 Seven, Dodgers. And there's a ground ball to third. Baylor goes to Sachs for one. They might turn it. Nope, he's going to hold on to it. The throw is late, so it's going to be 5-4 on the fielder's choice. Two out. Near on set first, and here's Billy Hatcher, who's one for three. Singled and scored in the sixth. Fernando, his opening 27, 83 pitches, six and two-thirds innings, seven hits, two earned runs, and two strikeouts. Midlife Crisis says, after relocating to South Texas at the end of a school year, I didn't have any friends, so I spent every day and night playing every game of the 1983 uh, season listening to the Astros on the radio after about 650 games I realized I was using the new super advanced steel system wrong when Johnny Lamaster was leading the National League with about 40 steals 50 games in yep that that's a trash <laughs> I'm surprised that Johnny Lamaster got on base 40 times in 50 games pitch to Hatcher Billy swings a ground ball to Anderson. Sacks for one. Steve will not throw to first. But the side's retired anyway because that was the third out. No runs, a hit, no errors. We go to the eighth inning at 7-2 L.A. So it's going to be Larry Sorensen coming in. Larry, 3-3 three and three with two saves for the Cubs and an ERA of 4.93. He is 30 years old, a fastball pitcher, 84, and a flyball pitcher. His last appearance was five days ago. He went five and two-thirds against the Padres on the 8th in a 12-10 loss. He went five and two-thirds, as we said, 91 pitches. My goodness. Eight hits, six runs, all earned. A homer, he walked one and struck out three. No decision for him. So overall, 45 and two-thirds, 55 hits, 26 runs, 25 earned, seven homers. He has walked 10 and struck out 19. What would Ricky have done in that setting? Oh, my gosh. In 80... 83 season. 82 is the year he stole 135. LeMaster was an A. 15-13. But Oh, but he always gets the jump though, right? On a 2 through 12. See what they do with Maldonado now. Candy 1 for 3. He has single, struck out, scored, and driven in his 11th. And now we will let Len Matusik hit. Len, two for fours, is coming over for the Blue Jays for Al Oliver. Has a triple and a home run. Doesn't have a pinch hit. Of course, he can't DH like he did in Toronto. Sorensen's afternoon starts with a fly ball to right center field. Back goes Moreland to way back. And that ball is out of here. That's on to Addison. 
And so Lenny Matusik clears Wrigley Field, and it's now 8-2 L.A. And as Stephanie would say on Full House, how rude. That ball was crushed. In fact, that might have even been caught in the bleachers across the street. So 8-2 now. Sorensen hung a curve. And that ball is going to need some money for a train. Ricky was 2 for 7, 10, or 2 to 7, 12. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, because the secondary numbers are... Well, oh, I get it there. I think Atlanta where the babe called a shot. So, yeah, so LeMaster... Yeah, okay, I get it now. Here's Socia, 1 for 3, single and RBI. Hits to Mike, in the right, Moreland coming in. And Keith makes the catch. One out for Sack. Steve having himself a day. Three for three. Three singles and an RBI. Every once in a while, I'll watch the clip of Kingman in 79 hitting one today where the replay board would be over Waveland Avenue. And you see behind that replay board the, the brick house and the tree well the leaves weren't quite there when that tree was on that tree when Kingman hit it and so you could actually watch the ball hit on the street and bounce to that poor person's front porch pitch to Sachs here's a fly ball right center Hatcher moves over makes the catch for the out to away that Cubs team could have repeated if they would have stayed healthy. They could still compete in 85, even with all the injuries. Yeah, they, they lost all their starters. Here's Fernando. He's 0 for 3. Well, the run scored. Two out, top of the eighth. Ground ball to Sandberg. Rhino by the bag over to first. And that will retire the side. However, they get another run. On the home run. One hit, no errors. We go to the bottom of the eighth, 8-2 eight, LA. So here's Sandberg, Lopes and Moreland. Rhino one for three. Fernando has only thrown 85 pitches. He should be good for the CG here. Kenny Landrell, by the way, comes into center field. He is a four and a two. Sandberg swings, going to test out Landro White right away. Kenny rides the Schwinn, one out. Brings up Lopes. Davy is 0 for 3, so is 26 of the year, and scored. Steve, how you doing? Glad to have you along. Yep, we are live on a Tuesday at 3 minutes past 1. Pitch to Lopes. Ground ball up the middle. Anderson with a dive. Makes a fantastic stop. Throws to first, and they got him. So that brings up Moreland. Keith, one for three. He has singled and driven in two. Now has 60 RBI. That's right, Steve Tower. 2,000 subs on YouTube. That's a lot of footlongs, my friend. It's a lot of turkey. Over the counter. Pitch to Moreland. Keith draws a walk. Fernando, known for a lot of strikeouts, has just fanned two. In fact, that's his first walk of the ball game with two out here in the eighth. Here's Jody Davis. Jody, you for three with a strikeout. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Congrats. Moreland stays put. Ground ball right side. Cabell will pick it up. And Moreland will trot in the third base unless the C's part. Nope, the throw goes in the infield. So the Cubs have runners on the corners. Two out for Leon Durham. Leon is two for three. He is single twice. Dodgers broke this open in the seventh. 
with three. Durham swings. There's a fly ball right center field. Back goes Landro way back there. And that ball is gone. And so the Cubs are going to try to make a game out of this. It's now 8-5 to five as Durham smashes his eighth of the year. So Fernando had a scroogey that didn't screw the right way. And Durham crushed it. There wasn't a blessed thing that Landro could do. So Moreland, Davis, and Durham all score. And with two out, here's Spire. Chris is one for three. Did you jinx Fernando? We'll see in a moment. They at least made it closer. All five runs for the Cubs are earned. Fernando looks to the sky and delivers, and there's a base hit into left field. Russell will throw it in. Tommy works his gum in the dugout. Brings up Boa with two out. Larry, one for three. He has singled and struck out. Sosha goes down to calm down Fernando. And Fernando's pitch struck him out. So the side is retired. A screwball on the inside corner. But the three-run homer from Durham at least makes the ninth inning interesting. We go to the ninth, 8-5 L.A. So top of the lineup for the Dodgers, Anderson, Baylor, and Russell to face Sorensen. Pitch to Anderson. In the left, Lopes comes in. One out. Baylor is 0 for 4. You can get away with that when your team has 11 hits and 8 runs. And there's a pop-up. Right side. Moreland coming in. Durham on the grass. It's going to be Leon's ball. Two out. So pitcher spot Hatcher and Sandberg for the Cubs in the ninth. Here's Russell. Bill is one for four. A single, an RBI, and a run scored. In the left, Lopes goes back by the pins. Makes the catch to retire the side. Dodgers go quietly in the ninth. No runs, no hits, no errors. Bottom of the ninth coming up, 8-5 Dodgers. So who can hit a lefty? Gary Woods at 147. The split says it's a 300 chance here. Three doubles and an RBI as a pinch hitter. He's hitting 133 without lone RBI. Cubs need three to tie and four to win. Fernando starts the ninth with a liner in the left field that's going to drop in front of Russell. And so they start with a single. 11th hit for Chicago. And here is Billy Hatcher. No hook from Tommy. Not yet. He threw 135 pitches. He's throwing 117. And trying to take advantage of Fernando, they'll bring in Ron Say, and that doesn't look, look like that's going to work. 263, 20 home runs in the first half of the season, and 54 RBI. Two for three is a pinch hitter. Woods on first. Fernando's pitch popped up. Sacks gets the rainmaker on this beautiful day in Chicago. One out. So here's Ryan Sandberg. Rhino one for four with a single. Fernando's pitch. Sandberg in the right. Cabell, you'd think they'd have hooked him, makes the catch for the second out. And so the Cubs are down to their last chance. And that will bring up Davey Lopes, who was one for four, or 0 for four, rather. 
Stolen base and a run scored. Valenzuela deals and there's a fly ball to left. Russell coming in and the Dodgers are going to win this one. By the score of 8-5. to five. So 8 runs, 5 hits, or 11 hits and 1 error for the Dodgers. They now move to 53-31. and 31. They left on 4. 5 runs, 11 hits, and 3 errors for the Cubs. And they stranded 7. So Len Matusik with a pinch hit home run. That's pretty good. Greg Brock is your digital and ice MVP. 2 for 4, a homer, and drove in 2. Fernando goes the distance. He's now 11 and 7, 9 innings, 11 hits, 5 runs all earned. The home run, thanks, John, by Leon Durham. The three run shot in the eighth. He walked one and struck out three. The mania does indeed live on. Dennis Eckersley, 6 and 5 now on the year. 7 innings, 10 hits, 7 runs, just 3 earned. That's kind of the way the Cubs season is turning out, isn't it? He didn't walk anybody and struck out a batter. And Sorensen, one hit and one run through two. So as soon as we get that all squared away, we'll play the rest of the day in baseball for you. So if we're on tomorrow, we'll do some football. Come on. And then Thursday, we'll play the... Blue Jays and the Angels to close out the first half of the year. Texas beat the Yankees 5-3. to three. Jim Mason goes to 2-11. and 11. Phil Negro collects his Medicare check, goes to 9-7. and seven. Wayne Tolleson, 4-4 four for four with 3 RBI and a double. Pirates beat the Giants 4-2. to two. Cecilio Guante goes to 6-2. and two. Dave LaPointe, 4-9. and nine. Don Robinson, uh, it's a second save. Twins beat the Tigers 6-2 to two in Detroit. Ken Schramm, 9-8. Dan Petrie goes to 12-6. Greg Gagne, 3-4. for four. Two RBI and a double. Oakland beats Milwaukee 1-0. Tim Burtz is 5-3. Danny Darwin, 7-11. Oh, thank heaven. And Jay Howell gets his 18th save. Atlanta beats Philly 4-3-10. Bruce Suter finally gets a win. Ted Turner almost got what he paid for there. He goes to one and eight. Rucker four and four. Juan Samuel, two for five, is fifth of the year and drives in two. <coughs> Cincinnati beat Montreal two to one. Mario Soto, six and six. Bill Gullickson, six and four. Andre Dawson, one for one with a double. Bert Blylevin throws a two-hitter. Cleveland over Brett Saberhagen in Kansas City, 3-0. <coughs> wow. Blylevin, 13-5. Saberhagen falls to 7-6. Blylevin strikes out 7 and goes the distance. Shy Sox over Baltimore, 7-0. Britt Burns goes to 6-6. Six six, strikes out 7 going the distance. And Denny Martinez, his bad years continue. Bad year continues. He's 1-12. Cardinals beat the Padres 3 to 2 in 10. Ken Daly 6 and 1, Tim Stoddard 1 and 5, Jack Clark is 11th of the year 2 for 2 with 2 RBI. Mets beat the Astros 5 to 3 and 11. Roger McDowell goes to 2 and 4, Mathis falls to 1 and 5. Chances are that's not very good. Craig Reynolds 3 for 5, 2 triples and a stolen base. California in the Battle of the Aces beats Toronto 4 to 1. Mike Witt, 10 and 5. Dave Steve, 12 and 5. Both of those pitchers, I guarantee you, are going to be in Minneapolis next week. Bobby Gritch, 1 for 2 with a walk. And last but not least, the Red Sox beat the Mariners, 6 to 5. Bruce Hurst goes to 7 and 5. Matt Young, 6 and 10. Kearney for the Seattle, 3 for 4, is 4th of the year, and drives in 2. All right, so we'll see how I feel after this. Tomorrow we we'll might we might do some football, and if not, maybe Dave will do something. So get yourself a big old quart bottle of Uncle Ron's malaria tonic, 
And we'll definitely see you Thursday for the Jays and the Angels to close out the first half of the year. Thanks for all the kind words the last couple of weeks. They have been a lot. And we'll either talk to you tomorrow or Thursday. Have a good day, everybody. So long.